The state of Wisconsin is facing the largest budget shortfall since 2011, with estimates from at least one nonprofit group, Wisconsin, Pol Wisconsin Policy Forum, uh, estimating a $2 billion hole. That has largely been accelerated by slowing tax revenue, as well as increased spending to lift the state's economy out of its pandemic lows. Let's bring in Sarah Godlewski. She is a Wisconsin, Wisconsin state treasurer. It's good to have you on today. You know, we're having this discussion as lawmakers over in Washington are debating that $1.9 trillion package, which also includes federal aid to states. How much of that $2 billion can you chip away at without help from the federal government? I mean, I, first, thanks for having me. And being here in Wisconsin, one thing that is very clear is that Wisconsinites are still hurting, whether it is the unemployed and underemployed who are trying to figure out how to pay their bills. I mean, here in the state of Wisconsin, we are seeing 1.2 million Wisconsinites that are facing that every single day. We are a small business economy, and the small businesses have run through their PPP funds, and they're not sure how much longer they can keep their doors open. And when our small Small businesses decline, so does our economy. And I think, you know, to your point, with exactly our local governments, I talk to county treasurers across our state, and they do are doing everything they can to tighten their budgets, dip into rainy day funds, and it's just not enough. They are having to furlough their essential workers and cut back on essential services, whether it's EMS firefighters, or even teachers. And so more aid is needed. And the sooner we can get that aid, the better. You, know, you look at the next round of aid. I mean, we talk a lot about uh, stimulus checks. We talk a lot about uh, unemployment insurance. But when you look beyond that and kind of state and local aid here, I mean, what's the biggest piece uh, when you look at Wisconsin's budget you're going to be looking to kind of tap into that's going to change with this new package? Because, I mean, earlier you guys had to get pretty uh, creative in trying to pull money from spots to, to give money to students in schools that needed to have Chromebooks and other things like that to continue learning. Uh, so talk to me about what the biggest impact is going to be. I mean, I, I think the biggest impact is twofold. One is this state and local aid, I think, will allow us to provide flexibility in how we use this aid. The CARES Act was helpful, but it was so targeted specifically on only directed towards uh, fighting COVID that many mayors, for example, that I were talking to, they were making decisions about do they hire, fire a mental or lay off a mental health nurse because she didn't fit the COVID package specifically. I mean, it was so specific that essential services like garbage didn't wasn't covered under that or utilities. And so flexibility, I think, is going to be a big game changer. But the other piece that I look at every single day and when I reflect back on the uh, Great Recession is how this recovery package is focused on people. I mean, the greatest part of it is providing direct payments and extending unemployment benefits. And that's what we need to make sure that folks here in Wisconsin can buy their groceries and can pay their rent and can help us keep our economy going. So we're talking about what is in the bill uh that's being debated in the Senate right now. But your governor, Tony Evers, recently unveiled uh, your own state budget, $91 billion, uh, which increases overall spending by 10 percent. How do you pay for all of that if you don't get help on the federal level? So what I really appreciate about Governor Evers' budget is he looks at the entire balance sheet. And as a former business owner, it's not just about the assets and the, um, the expenditures, it's also about the revenue streams. And what Governor Evers has proposed is, for example, giving state and local government control to increase the sales tax to help fight this. Um, it's also, we are looking at passing marijuana legislation that would provide over $100 million back to our state, um, our state budget. So it's not just an expenditure package, it's pretty inclusive on how we would also bring in new streams of revenue, uh, which we have to start thinking um, thinking about knowing that we are getting out of a devastating um, recession. When we uh, think about how this plays out state by state, it's interesting because we had a congressman on this show from California kind of saying that his constituents shouldn't get help from other states that didn't lock down or see that big of a fall off uh, pointing to South Dakota. It was a strange. I'm still trying to really process when you look at maybe how Wisconsin's been able to weather the storm and how it's different state by state. I mean, what's your takeaway in terms of how you guys have had to face the pressure in cutting costs? You're talking about mayors on a local level, but but kind of what's been the hardest 
pill to swallow when it comes to not seeing as much federal aid as you could have earlier on? I, I think the hardest thing um, has been just the lack of consistency. When they passed the CARES Act, um, yes, that did help Wisconsinites. It helped small business, and then it helped local governments specifically fight the virus. But we never knew when we were going to get assistance again. And we saw small businesses running through their PPP funds. We saw state government or local governments that were running through their um, COVID aid as they were kind of thinking through how they can increase and even digitize, for example, um, their contact tracing efforts. And so the, the lack of just clarity and um, political games that were going on in Washington was really frustrating because constituents would call us and say, I don't know how I'm going to pay my bills. It's been unclear about how these unemployment benefits are going to be paid. I One day I hear some, one thing and then another hear, day I hear something else. Um, and small businesses were the same. And so consistency, um, I think, is something that was really important. And with the American Rescue Package, we know exactly what we are going to be getting. With benefits being extended now, we're looking at to August to um, September with unemployment, PPP funds now being um, extended and looking at even aid for restaurants and bars, um, all that and flexibility for local governments and how they're going to use that aid. Uh, so I think collectively, that's going to help us better weather this storm. As ambitious as the state budget is, inevitably we're talking about sort of unprecedented times when you think about just how everything shut down as a result of the pandemic and limited revenue significantly. Uh, where are the concessions going to come from? What are some cuts in services that you think are especially going to take a hit that the state's considering right now? I mean, just a few weeks ago, I heard from uh, my hometown area in western Wisconsin about teacher cuts that they are making, which is absolutely mind boggling because we need our teachers back in the classroom. That is something that's actually really been a stymied our um, economic recovery is kids are at home. Moms and a lot of parents have had to figure out who's going to be taking care of kids and being their teachers at the same time. And so whether it's with teachers that we're seeing cuts, we've also been, I just talked to an EMS director recently in our state and he's looking at how he might have to cut his EMS services. So I think it's really hard to pinpoint an exact area because all these services are essential at the end of the day. They all play a unique role in how we build a stronger, um, a stronger community and we are able to get out of this recovery. Sarah Godlewski, uh, Wisconsin State Treasurer, appreciate you joining us to break down all of that. Be well, have a great uh, weekend.